Um, I'm Bea Carpenter and I'm a second year and I'm currently studying Biological Natural Sciences. And the modules I've picked this year are Neurobiology, um, Experimental Psychology and also Biology of Disease, which is kind of pathology and all to do with that. Um, so I did obviously apply to Biological Natural Sciences, but I also applied for Biochemistry for um, all of my other options as Natural Sciences just isn't the same across other unis in the UK. Um, and I think I'm really, really glad I didn't end up doing biochemistry because the choices I've picked now and the subjects I'm studying now are quite far from that field. And I think I would have felt a little bit trapped in a biochemistry course, but natural sciences is so broad. And especially in first year, you're just doing such a huge range of topics. Um, so it really allowed me to find something I was interested in um, and eventually hopefully can specialise in um, next year and this year as well. A lot of female role models from the past have been lost um, or overshadowed by male figures who are also in their field um, and they also just weren't given the same opportunity to reach the level that their male counterparts were and that's just feed it into the system so it's you know the people who are at the top of their game now are slightly older and because of the tradition that women weren't seen as as capable um, I think they haven't had that chance that we haven't had that year to catch up yet to that time to get women into those positions as well so there is still such disparity and although I think it's it is changing it's probably not changing quite fast enough and I think having a female role model in something you want to do is just it's just like look, being able to look in the mirror and think oh, if they can do it, maybe I can do it too. And I know people who don't feel as inspired when it's potentially a man because they might just have a different perspective on things, that we do have different perspectives and we have different interests. And I think there are all kinds of factors that are just when you see someone who is more like you doing something you aim to do, it does just automatically give you that sense of, oh, I might be able to get there as well. Something I'm involved in here as well is um, something called Cambridge Girl Talk and we're basically an online space for just projecting women's voices really and it's not just science, I mean, we actually haven't done much in women in STEM up until now. Um, we mainly have people who write about uh, either their subject or how they spend their time in Christmas, it can be anything or something like the royal family um, and what's it like having a monarch who maybe is seen as a matriarch, we've had so many different topics but our current topic is actually women in STEM and um, just yesterday we published an article by another natural scientist here who um, was just talking about the importance of having female role models and the lessons that she's learned from women in STEM around her and continuing that conversation we're organising an event this evening that is a panel event discussing what it's like to be a woman in STEM and where we've got to now and where we've come from um, with three really esteemed um, women scientists who are actually based in Cambridge. So that's really exciting. And I think it shows that there is, you know, they are out there, but their names just might not be known to you as quickly as some others, so. So I've always been interested in music. Um, I started singing when I was in about year seven, maybe age 11, and I also played the trumpet. And I think that was quite funny because it wasn't necessarily a ladylike instrument. And I think in some ways there was still stigma about, um, even though it was pretty modern, me playing, you know, female trumpeters are everywhere, but there was still quite a, like, I was always the only girl in the orchestra, in, in the trumpet section. Um, so that was quite nice. And I was very loud as a child, so I think it was just another way for me to be loud, really. Um, and then I also sang, yeah, throughout all of secondary school, um, for quite, quite seriously, and also sang in choirs. And I really enjoyed that, just having an outlet that wasn't work and didn't feel, I was still learning, but I didn't feel like I had to use my brain in the same way. It was a nice kind of period to just switch off. Um, and then sports, I've played lacrosse um, through most of my time at school and also I've continued to do it a bit at uni. And it's, again, just a really nice, relaxing um, outlet and quite challenging as well in terms of like, physically. It's nice to get outside instead of just standing in a lab, which I found last year I did a lot of. So it was really nice to be able to actually run around. Um, and then my interest in feminism and kind of activism as well. I think I've always been influenced by my mum and my sister, who are also um, big feminists, and my dad as well, but maybe not so active. Um, and yeah, it's just kind of grown. And I think it's, I realised there was 
so there were maybe certain issues in science um, to do with like gender disparity and not seeing as many female role, role models. Um, and so feminism and my passion for science kind of intertwined in quite a nice way.